with great love and respect in my heart, <clears throat> I welcome you from the city of Varanasi. Before we begin, <clears throat> let's just take a moment to settle down and wherever you are, just pull your spine straight. <clears throat> Open your shoulders. And close your eyes. Lighten your mind. And invite that peace, calming, cooling sensation in your eyes. Relax your facial muscles, neck, shoulders, spine, softening the belly, get grounded. All the restlessness settling down. Connect with that stillness within. <clears throat> Nothing needs to change. Nothing needs to be adjusted. Just keep breathing. Mind will come with suggestions. I need to fix this. I need to do that. I need to, I'll be more comfortable only after this. <clears throat> Pay attention to that suggestion of the mind and keep breathing. you will notice all the four nooses of mind will come into play as you are trying to become still. Soften your body a bit more into this stillness. Bring a sense of appreciation for the next breath that's rising from the navel and expanding in your heart. As you bring the sense of appreciation, thought in your mind, that ascending of the breath will be followed with light, illuminating that space. I'm aware of all the restlessness of the mind. 
but not acting on it. I'm bringing the mind back to the breath, to that appreciation. Nothing more. Whatever comes into the mind, we breathe into it. We transmute it. We keep it very simple, just appreciating the breath. Just with your eyes closed, take your attention within. Any unsettledness, any discomfort, any stiffness, relax it. You may want to bring it so as you breathe in, um, as you breathe out in your mind. <clears throat> Repeating the mantra so hum with each breath. Effortlessly, you don't have to do it, but if the mind is Wandering, bring it back to so hum that I am. In breath, you are thinking of the sound so out breath hum that I am. which is boundless, free, ever-present, ever-pure, capable of transcending any limitation that I am.
with complete awareness. We welcome the next breath up the spine. Holding the breath for a moment and relaxing into this retention of the breath. Slowly releasing the breath. Thank you for doing this. Gently, you can open your eyes. <clears throat> greet yourself, greet each other. Thank you for taking this time. The restlessness is all around us and within us. It's not bad. We have to just know that mind is restless right now. Baba Kinaram says, Man bhaage to bhagan de, tu mat bhaag sharir. O oh body, if the mind runs, let it run. But you don't run with it. Mind will run. <clears throat> if the mind runs, body runs with it. Because mind's nature is to run, to move, to attach itself to something. But if body starts moving in that direction, we do have a choice. Some part of us puts a break on it. And this is yoga. Beginning of it, at least. That deviations of mind will come. Am I following that suggestion of the mind or not? That is within our control. And that is the practice of yoga. Yoga. I had met two people last year here and had given them a pretty much the same practice. One person came and reported, Babaji, it's much better now. And I'm really enjoying this, just playing with this idea that I don't have to run after every thought. I make a play out of it. Okay, this thought has come. What am I going to do with it? And it has been a wonderful experience just watching it, managing it, and not getting all roused up, riled up with this. The other one says, 
Babaji, I can't do this. I'm totally incapable of doing this. I said, no, you're capable of doing it. You have just accepted defeat. It happens. It happens. We fail. But we get up. We do not accept that I cannot do it. If we live with that mindset that I cannot do it, we have already given in. There is no yoga. There is no yoga. We keep trying. You may fall down 99 times out of 100. As long as you haven't given in, you are still a yogi. As long as you've not given in and put that label on yourself that I cannot do it. I'm different. I have a different temperament. I have a different body type. I have a different mind type, personality. Whatever the label we put on ourselves and give up trying, we have really given up. on what we really came here to do. We came here to really connect with our divinity, connect with that in us that keeps making effort the least. Last week, I was visiting my monk brother, Baba Priyadarshi Ram his ashram in Chhattisgarh, in a state that's 300 miles from here. And watched how disciplined he was with his time. And we sat, sat down and we were just talking about life and whatever we do. And he mentioned exactly the same thing. He said, the work that needs to be done today is keep reminding people to try to simplify because there is so much restlessness and so many demands are being thrown at us all the time, particularly with the, the phones and the social media and the connectivity of people, accessibility of people to each other. And that restlessness is amplified. We cannot do everything. A person cannot do everything. Even things that may seem very important. The more important you think you are, the more things you have to be busy with. Even if somebody else is not asking you to do something, you ask yourself that you can do it, you want to do it, you should do it. And then we have so many things that we are pulled in so many different directions with. But the real work is to not compromise the time that we carve out for ourselves. And I watched his days very busy. And he has streams of people just waiting for him to come and see. And everybody wants five, ten minutes. And he said, you know, I just sit and listen and do what 
we give him some advice and blessings. But the main thing is I'm just listening to them. By and I'm just quiet. And he said, same thing that I was just sharing with you, that we really have to look at the restlessness of her mind. And try to minimize our busyness with the busyness of the thoughts. We don't have to run to everything. We don't have to go to every party. We don't have to fix everybody's problem. There has to be a little modesty in that. Some people say, Babaji, I try to bring a discipline, but it just doesn't happen. And as you all know, I try to introduce the little discipline in your life that if you can't do anything, at least start with those three deep breaths in the morning. If you have received a mantra, at least sit in your bed and do one or two mala job before you start your day. Some kind of commitment to your spiritual practice has to be there with no compromise and without it being a chore. Give it five, ten minutes, whatever it is, just as soon as we wake up in the morning, first greet ourselves, bow to that presence in our life in whatever name, form. Just be face to face with that presence fully. That being face to face with that presence is called darshan. People go to have darshan in a temple. You will go to have a darshan in a place of pilgrimage. You can have darshan right in your bedroom, on your bed, as soon as you wake up. Just carving out that little time. Bowing to that presence. And even looking at what your mind has become busy with, with all the thoughts you woke up with, that you got to accomplish this, 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 this. Yes, you will accomplish whatever, but you don't need to stress about it. Maybe in your mind, you will have little priorities, what really needs to be done and what you think would be nice to do. So having little priority and knowing that, we set out in our day. Sometimes we take on others' problems and that keeps on going in our mind. Even from that, we have to take a break. All the things that we think are so important and the world can't go without solving it, the world will go on. What I'm really saying is we have to protect the little carved out time for ourselves. Keep it very simple without having too much expectations or judgments. Just being present to that moment. Being present to yourself. 
without any fancy thoughts, fancy expectations of shooting lights and just being there. May you make a game out of when you are playing with the deviations of your mind. Instead of blaming yourself and being feeling like a victim, just acknowledge that this thought has come in. It's a good thought. I will try. If I fail, I do not too much. Don't blame too much myself. I will try again. I'll try again. I do not put a label on myself that I can't do it. I'm not made for this. By putting those kind of labels, we give up and continue. So do not give up hope in the self. Baba says, living a hopeless life is a miserable life. Have hope that someday you will come out of this darkness. We may not see an end to this, but there is always light at the end of the tunnel. There is always Chitta vritti nirod. That's within our control. Mind will come with the deviations and we don't have to run after every suggestion. This is yoga. We are all yogis. You don't need to read fancy books to be a yogi. Experiment on yourself. Look at yourself. Maybe even a day you can say, okay, today is the day I'm just going to observe my thoughts and my relationship with my thoughts. Because the thoughts are not your thoughts. Thoughts are not you. And just see what kind of the relationship you have. I'm moving more and more towards simplicity in my own mind and thoughts and actions. And it's very precious. Things happen, things are happening. Simply sitting doesn't mean the projects are not happening in the ashrams and all those things happen. But I'm not attached to anything. Not attached to anything. I enjoy it. If it's not happening, it's not happening. If it's happening, it's happening. Thank you all very much for being present. And I just shared with you what's on my mind. Hopefully something made sense. And if it didn't, that's okay too. I would love to say hi to you, greet you. If anybody has anything to say, you can. It's a beautiful weather right now in Varanasi, as you can see, not cuddled up in sweaters and jackets. It's a really, the weather is perfect right now. So there is lots of activity around and 
people who are in hibernation have come out and many guests are coming. I got a few guests sitting right in front of me from few from Italy, few from the US, few from India. So the river of life is flowing and we're just enjoying everything. Thank you all very much. Suman, it's good to see you. What time is it in Australia? Thank you, Baba. Hmm. Baba, it's uh, 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. Good okay. to see you too, Baba. <laughs> Congratulations Sorry. and happy being a father. Thank you, Babaji. She's right here sleeping. Okay. Taking a nap. She's uh, three days old today. So, yeah. Three days? Three days, okay. yes. Mm. Okay. She will sleep and she will keep you awake. Yeah, <laughs> she will. Yeah. Thank you, Babaji. Uh-huh. Bye. Thank you. <clears throat> Julian, what's happening at Upasana? Julian Stewart, anybody there? Hi, Baba. Um, everything's going well up here. We finally have good weather for it was raining for like a week or so. And uh, Nima and I are building a deck, and uh, the drywall is taken down in the temple, so all the projects are going real well. And uh, yeah, it's just been beautiful, been beautiful. How is the road holding up? It's good. I went down a few weeks ago and dug like many holes along it for the rain, and uh, it's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. And what's happening with the the project we were talking about? The young young people. I had some friends. I had some friends come up and sit and have kitchery for an evening. And no, no. The, of, what was that? AmeriCorps. Oh, AmeriCorps. AmeriCorps. Yes. Mm -hmm. We have the projects. We have the maps laid out for trails, and once that's all situated we can um, have the people come up and view the property and see what they think okay and block out the time and let me know when that will be yes baba Babu, who is in sonoma anybody in the temple in sonoma Yes, Baba, quite a few. I think Nava is going to uh, unmute them. I'll spotlight them. Mindy? Is there a speaker next to you? A mic? Oh, can you hear me, Baba? How was the concert last night? Tonight. <laughs> We did a very quick changeover and emptied out the temple. It was beautiful. Okay, I can feel it. Your happiness. <laughs> <laughs> Your presence was strong all weekend, Robin. We yeah. had a very beautiful weekend here. A group from Sebastopol came yesterday, and then we had at least 40 or 50 people here for the concert after 20, 25 this morning for Satsang. And very beautiful. Okay, I'm going to tell um, 
Amy or Daniel just to take the camera outside of my room and show you my stillness. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi. So, <laughs> so here is a little view of what's happening here. A really big project to um, link two, uh, two of the buildings that were here before. You see that middle section in construction. So all of that is new. These two buildings were linked. Um, and then a whole nother floor was put on top. So we're ready for you to come <laughs> in a couple of weeks. Um, or maybe think about if you've, if you've always thought about coming to India and have it on your bucket list, maybe next year is your year. Um, so additionally at the front, we have work on our gate. And if you can see that all the way in the distance, also on the Ashram Temple. Um, and if you guys can see, this is Maganga, the Ganges River. Um, and right directly across from the ashram is Amrit Sagar, which is our eco park. A lot of projects happening over there. Um, not able to show you those in detail, but just know really wonderful things are happening there. Organic vegetables were growing, um, building up our, our goshala, our cow, uh, cow capabilities for um, milk and biogas. Um, Ayurvedic herbs and trees are being planted. So a lot of wonderful stuff happening here. I would take you on a view upstairs, which is an even more beautiful view, but I would lose Wi-Fi. So <laughs> maybe you have to come here to see it yourself. 